Hello, everybody. This is The Lawyer Show. I am your lawyer, Jeremy Rosenthal. One of the things that we accomplish on The Lawyer Show is uh, we have last-minute surprises. Uh, we, we, we like to do things differently. We like to just kind of surprise folks, uh, not necessarily do it in a way that's organized, not necessarily do it in a way that's prepared, not necessarily do it in a way that you or even I am expecting. This week, we have two things that happened, three things that happened. We had a few things that happened. Number one, uh, one of the things is that uh, we we had a change in plans uh, for one of our guests earlier this week, and that (coughs) put us into a bit of a scramble mode, which is how we like it. And not only only that, um, it got me to thinking that we have not, number one, had a repeat guest on. And number two, uh, with that guest, I believe at the very end of it, we talked about uh, having a, uh, a session where we just talk movies. We talk, we talk lawyer movies. We talk about lawyer culture, things that we've seen, things like that. And so really with very little preparation, we're going to bring to you today our lawyer movie extravaganza with my co-counsel, a repeated guest on the Lawyer Show podcast, (laughs) Attorney Bo Calabas. Well, Jeremy, thank you so much for having me back. I, you know, I, I'm honored to be your third or fourth choice for this, but um, I'm really honored to be back today and uh, happy to be talking some lawyer movies with you. You were my first choice for this. (laughs) I was hoping to have more of a panel discussion on it. Um, So we, we had other potential panelists that turn ourselves down. We have on a microphone today, Heidi Stark, who was the guest last week. Um, also, you're a second repeat person. A second repeat yes, person, this is yes. a big week, a lot of and big repeat. Every, okay, so we could, we could have gotten prepared for this. We could have planned this two, three months in advance. We could have watched, rewatched a lot of these movies, but that would require preparation and that would require planning. We, I don't, I, 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 like with the lawyer show podcast that we can just kind of pull it out of nowhere and just go i think seat of the pants is the way to go on this and also too it may you know if we remember things about movies incorrectly it it may generate some buzz and you know buzz is always good yeah no we 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 could have like two or three folks out there who are watching who are like no that's not what happened no and uh, you know we should get you should kind of get to the point where people could call in because something like that could could definitely add to the flavor today we are on facebook live so we encourage anybody to Write a question, ask a question, send it in. We'll debate it uh, yeah. or ignore it if you want to, like, talk over us and say that we're wrong about something, we'll, yeah. you know. Come on, comment live. We're, we're not afraid, and we, we like the challenge of it. And, uh, you know, and Heidi's sitting over there, and, you know, she's, uh, she's going to get drugged into this a little more than she thinks today, and uh, I'm excited about it. I was told before this today's podcast, I was told that uh, that, that – I talk a little much on these. That that I was told that 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 I, I I'm a little verbose and that that there's just there's just a lot of narrative for me. And to that criticism, whoever it may be from, because I understand, I yeah, <laughs> uh, what people say about me when I'm not around is none of my business. What I say to that vague, faceless criticism is get your own damn podcast. Exactly. You know who you know who people really talked over back in the day in one of the movies we were talking about early. No one believed Jim Garrison. Okay, so that so we're going to dive right in. So Bo is referring obviously to the movie JFK, which I we consider a lawyer movie. We do consider a, a lawyer movie. We you know we didn't think of it right out of the gate, but it did culminate in the trial. Mm-hmm. You know Clay Shaw on trial for the murder and conspiracy of JFK. Right. First trial ever brought. In back the into the left of JFK. Back into the left. Yes. How could we forget that? Back into the well. That's that <laughs> is a good. That's good trial advocacy because we remember it. Yes. Yep. And uh, what and else? that he had to subpoena time live. <laughs> okay. <laughs> to now, get that movie. <clears throat> did uh, did the uh, a couple things about that? First off, and and I wanted to see if we could go this whole hour with avoiding this. But it looks like we're going to hit it right out of the gate. You know where Five I'm. Five minutes in. <laughs> you, you, know, you, you know where I'm going with it, Bo. Oh, uh, Willie O'Keefe. <laughs> so there's a, there's a quote. There's a one. It, it really. So it, let's 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 
take a 40,000 foot view here. Let, let's take a step back. Let's look at, at lawyer movies globally and how we as lawyers look at them. I don't like lawyer TV. I don't really love lawyer movies. I just don't. I'll, I'll watch them, and I can be very, very entertained by them. I don't go out of my way to find them. I, don't, I, I get enough <laughs> of it, and I find that it just kind of annoys me because they don't get it right. I, I remember watching reruns of L.A. Law, and then you have uh, Jimmy Smits or or who who else was on that show? Oh, Corbin Burnson. Yeah, and the guy with the hair. Um, oh, uh, what was it? The Hamlet? What? Oh, Harry Hamlin. Hammer, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. from Clash of the Titans. Yes. And and this pot, man, I'll tell you what, I feel bad. Nobody really, I don't think I, we I have think any. I think we took Heidi's breath away with that. I like, love Harry <laughs> I also love Clash of the Titans, but that's not what we're talking about. There's a character named Calibus <laughs> that's on true. Clash of the Titans. That's true. <laughs> so, uh, okay, so when Harry Hamlin stands in front of a jury and starts arguing about, well, studies show that cigarettes have a blah, 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 blah. And in my mind, I'm like, it, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a needle off the record moment because as a lawyer, you're thinking you have to move heaven and earth just to get something like that into evidence. Mm -hmm. And it's going to take, not, even if you can manage to get in, to where you stand in front of a jury and just talk about a study about tobacco, mm -hmm. number one, it's going to take you a year to develop. It's going to take you probably 50 grand in legal fees yep. to get the experts to have the depositions and all that stuff. But they just, so my, the point is, is that, Lawyer TV tends to, it doesn't upset me, but I. Or just the fact they got the trial setting within a week oh, of yeah. when they wanted I've it. Seen, I, I think I saw the show. You remember the show Oz? Yeah. Uh, they, mm. had a, they had a capital murder and the guy was executed in the same episode. Oh, yeah. You know, got to fit it into an hour. Yeah. You know? uh, I mean, that's a, that's, that's a 17 year process, really, oh, anywhere yeah. else. <laughs> it's like, and the writ's done. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of, lot of money exchanges hand, too. So, so, okay. So going back, I don't take a whole lot from lawyer movies and incorporate them into my everyday practice. There are a few scenes that stick out to me, and there's a few quotes that stick out to me. One of the most famous, or, or, or one of the ones that you and I discuss the most, I may, I'm coming back full circle here to Willie O'Keefe. Uh, so Jim Garrison, the, the district attorney of New Orleans, is interviewing Kevin Bacon, so yes. Kevin Costner interviewing Kevin Bacon. Yep. Um, in an Angola prison. Angola? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yep. We, we had Sarah Russell on the podcast. We did. You can talk about Angola yep. State Prison in Louisiana. Not a fun place. Didn't look like it. Probably not many viewers there today. Mm -mm. No. No. Uh, and Willie O'Keefe, why don't you take us through the scenario? Oh, no, Bo, I'm watching and, and you do this. This is going to be good. <laughs> okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> he he puts very so so okay what was Willie O'Keefe's role he was a he was a male prostitute he was a male prostitute that was involved with Clay Shaw with Clay Shaw and David Ferry yeah how could we forget Joe Pesci in the Joe portrayal Pe of right. David Ferry so uh, who's also a pilot by the way too in real life mm -hmm. Joe Pesci is yeah. well no a David uh, Ferry was oh really yeah did the the boys get anything. Yeah, the boy didn't get in there, and I'm goose for mighty unapproachable. See, and <laughs> another reason why we have Bo here is because we get the voices. Uh, I may, I may kind of start chiming in too. Those of if we have any <laughs> millennials watching, I, and I, I'm sure we don't. So much of this is just going to go straight over their head. Yeah, they're already like they turned this off. This is like this is a dad show. If they even watched yep. it to begin with. <laughs> so okay, so Willie O'Keefe is in the Angola State Prison, and. He is a male prostitute, right? Mm -hmm. And Clay Shaw, who was on trial for killing President Kennedy in New Orleans, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and David Ferry had already died. I don't know if he had yet, but he at that point in the movie, it was before the trial. They were going out and talking. They were just trying to talk They were just to him interviewing and see what, the yeah, witness. See what, what, he did he knew. Knew, what did he know? Yeah. Because they <clears throat> those guys were not fans of President Kennedy. Because fascism they, was coming back, remember? Well, right. And, and so and Willie mm -hmm. O'Keefe... So he goes. So he's talking to Kevin Costner, and they're in like a field, and there's like cattle. Yeah, and the guys are cutting the grass with the with the machetes. And he says to Jim Garrison, "What? What? what I'm trying to put it in context. There's a specific quote which is not suitable for JP, Kathy, and the Crew Network. True. There was there was a certain you know penetration of a body part okay. that's unnatural, and you know I." I'm not going to take a position on any of that, but what I will say <laughs> is that he says, Mr. Galson, you have never, 
you you don't think this way because you have never experienced that particular act. That was a very appropriate way to put it. I'm powerful, add. powerful, powerful. Willie O'Keefe had experienced many atrocities in his life. He had experienced many hardships, one of which would be being in the Angola State Prison. Which apparently didn't rank. Uh, and he made it clear to Jim Garrison that he had such a rosy outlook on life because he had not experienced certain things. Yes. And that's a quote that may or may not be dropped around our office. But any other things? So we, we I made a list here. I've got, and, and it's crazy the amount of movies that, that we kind of, I mean, there's just a lot. Yeah. Well, and even that one kind of got, it was cool how they told the story in the trial, but mm -hmm. so unrealistic how, you know, the, the back and forth between, you know, where they brought in every little piece of the trial uh, well, and that, the, and the yeah. one closing argument. And that's just <clears throat> Oliver Stone, too, um, with that kind of sort of, you know, kind of scattershot approach that, that he did. Uh, and, 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 and it really, I guess it's a lawyer movie in that he's the district attorney of New Orleans and that they had a trial. Not really, a, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a JFK movie. Mm -hmm. um, so the one that ranks that, uh, that there's a few that we have to talk about here today. One, uh, My Cousin Vinny. Yeah, that's true. And I think really, I, we're not, Heidi's not going to be happy with us unless we get in the Legally Bond. I have it's a 20 year reunion. Okay. You've got to mention it. That's all I need. So I'm going to do more bloviating, which I'm told I like to do on the pot, the lawyer show podcast. Um, there is a lot of, and I, I recognize this right up front, there is a lot of built-in misogyny. Mm. With all of the, I, I can go down the list of all of these movies, and there are very, very few female heroine-type characters in these movies. And, and here's the ones I'm going to just shoot out at the audience, and we're going to get to as many of these as we can. Uh, a Few Good Men, okay. JFK. You, you kind of had a female heroine in that one. Demi Moore, but she wasn't Tom she's backup. Cruise. Yeah, yeah she she's a backup. backup. Uh, the verdict. Well, right? but she, well, well, and we'll get into it. But she kind of kept it on the rails when no one else believed. So it was kind of you know I'd give her a little more backup than that. Well, but didn't she want? Uh, and she brought Aunt Jenny or something like oh, that. Oh yeah, I remember yeah, she, that. Part. She pulled out all the stops to stay on that well, case. We'll, we'll so. get back. We'll get back to a few good men <laughs> here, but just kind of running down the list: the verdict, Paul the, Newman, the firm. My cousin Vinny, the Pelican Brief does have a strong female lead. I thought it was Sandra Bullock. Oh, it's uh, Julia Roberts. Julia Roberts, who yeah. also did Aaron Brockovich too. Which yes. Uh, okay, yeah. uh, Aaron. Okay, good. Aaron, Aaron Brockovich, female lead mm -hmm. in a, in a lawyer movie. Only if you're Julia Roberts. Although she's not the lawyer, but she definitely right. is the lead, right? Yeah. I would say she so. She became a lawyer. She eventually went did to she, law school. Did she oh, go yeah. to law school? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, a civil action. Uh, John Travolta. John Travolta. To Kill a Mockingbird. Michael Clayton. All the President's Men, The Lincoln Lawyer, The Insider, which I have as a lawyer movie, mm. uh, Anatomy of a Murder, which is an older movie. I hope we get to that one. That was interesting. You brought up honorable mention Animal House. Okay, we got due process in there. Can't I'm not going to let again. you sit here and badmouth the United States of America. Yes, sir. He's pre-law. <laughs> He's pre-law. I thought it was pre-med. <laughs> What's the difference? And there's going to be a lot of that, hopefully, today in, in, in this podcast. Caddyshack. You got a judge. You got a judge. Uh, and 12 Angry Men, I think, too. Uh, that, that one's obvious. And 12 Angry Men, right? Mm -hmm. So Legally Blonde, I haven't watched it. It's been about 20 years for me. When did it come out, Heidi? It's 20 years old. You're, the, 20 you're, years the, old. you're yeah. the authority on. This is your on, lead. So. Yeah, this is your know. turn. It's been a long time since I've seen it. I, there are There is a second movie. Possibly a third, but I'm not 100% sure. And, I, and Reese Witherspoon is big, coming back and fan. doing this again. Okay. I don't know that I'd say a big fan. So there were two, right? What was that? There were two, right? Two. I think there were two. So and what, they're, remi they're making a third. I, I, I don't want to ruin Legally Blonde for anybody out there who hasn't, for any other, for anybody who hadn't watched it. But what, I, I know the basic premise. Jeez. Don't don't spoil the plot or well, spoil the plot. I don't care. Well, I mean, you can read this anywhere. So she's trying. She was following a guy to law school, right? Was Correct. that the deal? And then she gets in, kind of surprises everybody, yep. and. And they all kind of make fun of her, right, at the start? Yeah, because she's basically kind of a well-kept girl. She's got a lot of money. She has a dog that she carries around. I can't remember the dog's name, but she carries around the dog mm. all the time. And then she has to 
goes and gets a job at a beauty salon, I think. Okay. Um, okay. It's just really cute. It's just kind of you can overcome, you can make it, and just because you don't look like something on the outside doesn't mean you can't do something. So. Well, that's what Bo mention. and I look. Bo and I, I, we actually have a lot of overlap in the movies that we like. You're watching J.P. Kathy and the Crew Network. You can see J.P. Kathy and the Crew between 7.30 and 9, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. This is the lawyer show. We're on between noon and 1 on Facebook Live on Thursdays. Uh, what I was getting at was Bo Calibus and I, we have a lot of overlap on movies. I, I probably have more, more overlap with you on movies than I may have, frankly, with anybody else, including my, my spouse. Now, you, Similar interests, but You also, like the Poseidon Adventure. Oh, yeah. 1972, Erwin Allen, little disaster movie. Very good. I mean, yeah, and, and I, yeah, I cut you off. That's what I do. But I, hey, you were saying... On, on, I think I was done. <laughs> uh, the, uh, you're you're more into the airport movies um, than for a while. I, I mean, you if I think if you we like airplane, we laugh at that. But if you like any of the airplane movies, you've got to go watch the airport series because that's just where they ripped off all that stuff for the comic comedic part of it. Which I mean, they're the the first one was probably their best one. It's still you go back and look at it now and it's campy, but it's still mm-hmm. it's entertaining. They had big casts in them. You know, one movie that I cannot, they, they actually made this movie for you. <laughs> oh, I know where we're going. Uh, uh, the, and, <laughs> and you refuse to, wa- you've never watched it, is a Clockwork Orange, which I also think is a bit of a lawyer movie. A little bit. It's about criminal justice. You wouldn't know. Even That's though true. they made the thing, I mean, it, this movie got banned for 10, 15 years in England. And if you ever watch it, you're going to ask yourself why they ever unbanned it. Well, I'll make you this deal. If one person on Facebook who's not inside this room comments that, Bo, you really need to watch Clockwork Orange, I will come in Monday having seen Clockwork Orange. But you won't take my word for it. I, I bet you're probably right. I mean, you, you know me on the movies. You know what movies I like. It's Stanley so. Kubrick. That's true. We're big Kubrick fans. I so. mean, Stanley <laughs> Kubrick, uh, big Tarantino fans. Mm. I just We need Tarantino to do a lawyer movie. I don't know how that would look. Yeah, I would like to see, and we were talking about this yesterday on Once Upon a Time in Hollywood w- with Cliff, with mm-hmm. the spear gun and the wife who fell out. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, I'd like to know how Cliff got around those charges because you know there had to Good be a question. lot of questions around that. I Good think question. That could be a movie in and of itself. So let, let's let's set the scene for those who have not seen Once, and this is not a, I don't think this is a plot spoiler because no. it's it's really kind of one of those. It was a small part of the plot. It's just too. one of those little Tarantino offshoot moments. Yeah. So. Uh, I guess one of the main char- one of the main characters who's played by Brad Pitt, he's a professional stuntman. Mm-hmm. He goes to uh, the the word on the street is is that he killed his wife. Right. In 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 within the Hollywood insider, like somebody didn't want to give him a job one day. It's and Kurt Russell, and it's because Kurt Russell's wife's on the project in the movie, mm-hmm. and she doesn't want him because he killed his wife. <laughs> yeah, he killed his wife. <laughs> And, 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 and he never got prosecuted for it. And so in classic Tarantino style, they do a cutaway, and there's Brad Pitt. It's a hilarious, I mean, just eight <laughs> seconds. Great storytelling because you know the entire story just by eight seconds. So they cut away, and there's Brad Pitt on his little fishing boat with a spear gun. Wearing his diving mask. Wearing a diving mask. He cracks a beer open, and the <laughs> beer just spritzes on his face. And his wife is just... He he he's uh, Brad Pitt looks thoroughly done. He can't do anything right. He can't from, do it. from the sound of it. And 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 the wife is just in his business, and then that's it. That's all we see. <laughs> that's all we see. So I I think the biggest I think there's two main obstacles to him being prosecuted. Okay, number one is corpus delecti. Yeah, they true. have to have the body of the crime. They have to because it's 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 unknown whether they ever found the body, and it's unknown <laughs> how he beat. Because I think at some point somebody says, "Hey, he killed his wife and he got away with it." So <laughs> um, we don't know if the body was found. We don't know if there were charges. We don't know, you know, grand jury or or whatnot. So I, I would also say that my guess, being in California, is. I don't know that they were within the regional jurisdiction of the United States. I don't know how the maritime stuff necessarily works. Could have been in international waters. Could yeah. I think I think that could have been. Yeah. But they don't have a body and that we know of. That we know of it at least in the movie. That's how I would assume that he got away with that in 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 that movie. But that's just a, it's just a hysterical scene because yeah, he cracks a beer open and goes and he's just like and he just he just yeah, and uh, that 
that that was really funny. Um, but it's Brad Pitt. I mean, it's Brad. He's I mean, so underrated too. He's amazing. Like he's been in some great movies. I wouldn't say amazing, Heidi. Oh yeah, totally amazing. Well, we don't know of a Brad Pitt lawyer movie, do we? Does he do? Does is there? Are there any Brad Pitt? I mean, you and, and some of these actors. That's another thing that I kind of go through this list that I that I saw. A lot of common denominators. Um, m- uh, Matthew McConaughey. He's in a lot. He's yeah. been in a few. A Time to Kill, which is not on the list, but he was in that and The Lincoln Lawyer. Yeah. Uh, Richard Gere uh, was in a few that I uh, I didn't have. I didn't list one. The one where I, and I forget the name of it. He was with Ed Norton in one, mm-hmm. and he's the lawyer. Uh, he's also a, another good scene, which I'm going to take. I'm going to get a lot of. I'm going to get a lot of business for this. A lot of flack. One of my favorite quotes for my practice for from any movie is from the movie beyond, Chicago. Beyond the Kevin Bacon quote, <laughs> right? Another, <laughs> another, another one uh, is from the movie Chicago, which is just a musical, right? But it's about. I mean, it's and you've watched it, Bo, mm-hmm. right? You know the words to all the songs. <laughs> I'm um, big, uh, yeah, I'm a big show team guy. <laughs> uh, look, I, I mean, that's <laughs> another reason why you've made the panel today. Okay, hey, things things you learn about me, you know. <laughs> that that and you're you're willing to be here because you could race back to the office for a for a one thirty. Uh, two thirty now. Oh, two thirty. Oh, oh yeah. so we can we yeah, can we can we can drone we some, on. We got some time. Uh, so, um, in the movie Chicago, uh, the the husband who's God, what's his name? Same Chest Rockwell from uh, Boogie Nights. Oh, <laughs> I see him. I yeah, see I him see in him. my mind. Um, John C. Riley. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. Jo- John C. Riley uh, is kind of the sad sack husband, and he's going to Richard Gere, who's the high priced criminal lawyer, and the and and Richard Gere kind of ignores him. The guy's there, literally hat in hand, saying, "Will you defend my wife? She's accused of murder," and he and Richard Gere's pretending not to listen to him. Or, or not listening to him, and then Richard Gere finally snaps. He says, "He says I didn't. A- I might get this all wrong, but he says I didn't ask you if she was an orphan. I didn't ask you if she was innocent. I didn't ask you this. I didn't ask you that. I didn't ask you this. I asked if you had five thousand dollars." <laughs> And then the guy has. I don't think Stark approves of that. Heidi. I've heard that quote in the office. And then he comes up, <laughs> and the guy comes up. With, I think he's got a thousand, and then Richard Gere starts to listen. So, but the the point why why I think that's a good quote for the practice of law, particularly in our line of work, is, I mean, really, there, there's, and I'm going to take a step back, and I'm going to go into lawyer show podcast mode where I rant. We'll keep this one to a minute or less. Um. Abraham Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln says one of the most important things in an attorney-client relationship, the most important thing, is the legal fee because it tells the attorney he has a client and it tells the client that he has an attorney. Um, and, and so who am I to fuck with Abraham Lincoln? Okay. <laughs> but this, is, but this, 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 this point from the movie demonstrates it perfectly, Right. This is a tragic situation, but the lawyer really should not and does not feel bad about it and cannot be drawn into that problem for the reason that it's not his problem yet. He is not the lawyer, and the, and the client cannot expect that type of crossover. And not only that, and we, we, we talked about this a few episodes ago um, of the podcast, which is that you can't make the client's problem your problem. That's true. And it's the money that... That, that, that sort of cements that, that sort of solidifies that. Now, the, the, the lawyer, Richard Gere, doesn't need to be drawing that in that much in any way beyond that. But, and not only that, but we don't judge, right? We don't judge. Uh, people don't, when they go into the ER and, and, or they have lung cancer and, well, I'm not going to treat you because you made the choice to smoke, right? The doctor doesn't get to, the doctor doesn't, doesn't discriminate there. Well, so and also, from our point too, hey, the only question is, do you have 5,000 bucks? Well, and, 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 there's a method to the madness on that too, and and the other part of it is it's like like you, do, sure we get caught up in the emotion of the moment if we're in court if we're in trial or emotion or whatnot, but we can't get caught up in in the emotion to a point where we're living and dying with every high and low like the client is because mm-hmm. we still have to maintain our wits and plan for okay you know if this if this doesn't work what's next and if you're too emotionally involved or too angry or too wound up it's really hard to think on your feet to keep moving through it and that's also another 
important part to it where it's like it may, you know, we've all had the situation where the clients talk to us for 20 minutes and then we respond with a, you know, a three second answer, which is, well, you know, sure, all of that is important for you to get off your chest, but it's really going to come down to this because maybe not a lot of that is completely relevant. And that's why you're hiring the lawyer in the first place is to get in there and speak that language. So, and it's the money that is the barrier. It's, it is the barrier. It's the barrier because a lot of these lines can be blurred. A lot of these lines can be blurred. Right. Well, and a lot of problems are not really problems when you throw money in the equation. It's just like, oh, I just wanted the I, ice. Exactly. You know? That's so. exactly that's exactly right. Um, because people will sit there and, 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 and I'm the same way. They will take what's free, what's free, what's free. And if they have to put a price tag on it, well, I guess it's not that big of a problem. Right, exactly. Whereas if your pipes are burst, it's like mm -hmm. you're taking time off work to be there when the plumber wants to be there and you're paying him what he wants. You know, it's the same thing. It's just, you know, we're because we all get the things where I, oh, I can't get in mm -hmm. during the time of day. Oh, will you meet with me on Sunday or whatnot? And it's like, no, you know, you're not going to meet your plumber on a Sunday. You know, you're, you're, I don't know. You know? I'm, I'm, so speaking <laughs> of uh, Heidi, you've had plumbing. When you've had 15 days of no water, you'll take whatever uh, you can from, get. But I understand. From snow I, I mean, I understand that. That's, That's true. actually a really good way to think about it. Well, how did you, are you completely rebuilt after the, after the ice storm we're and all that? We're fully functional so. again. And um, we have flooring now as well, so that's great. While we're with you. Primal Fear was the other movie you were trying to think of with Richard Gere, Edward Norton. Oh, yes, he yes, yes. the altar boy. That's a great one. Yes. Great one. Um, okay. Oh, the ending is so oh, awesome on awesome. that. Yeah. yeah. I haven't seen that all the way through, but I have caught the end. And there's a good Simpsons takeoff on that with uh, Sideshow Bob, uh, mm -hmm. who is trying to kill Bart. Well, and, and you had a female judge in that, too. Oh, right. Yep. Yeah. So, um, question, Heidi. How many requests have we gotten for Bo to watch A Clockwork Orange on Facebook? Well, I was just going to say you probably needed to repeat that because if they missed it in the beginning when our viewers you know were what? still it's joining not even, in. I'm not even, you know what? But I think you should because we no. have more viewers if they now. Were not, if they weren't watching, then I'm not. Well. Okay, Bo Calibus has not seen A Clockwork Orange. I know I'm he a is Kubrick going fan. on this weird hunger strike where he will not watch it unless somebody not named Jeremy or Heidi are in this room. I think don't we make our paralegal? Don't we make like Tiana? Don't we, don't we make her watch this? You really do make people go and watch movies because you talk these movie quotes. All of you guys do. You talk these movie quotes all the time, and you don't. Well, what are we missing? What other ones? What, sir, what, what you're saying is we're podcasting every time we're at the office, really. Basically, so this okay. is what it's like to be in our office right now. Yeah. A few yeah. good men. Let, let's go to a few good men. Okay. Okay. So Tom Cruise. Airman O'Malley. Yeah. What are the what's he gonna say? Well, they're gonna come in and say absolutely nothing. <laughs> you know. What What is the allure? <laughs> okay, so I, I was trying to think about this. I was trying to think about what's the allure of a few good men. Um. Boy, I'll tell you what. It's got everything in it, though. It does. You've got. Number one, that cast was outstanding. It really was. I thought everybody did a really good job on it. Um, and you know, you've got, you've got, you've got the military, you've got veterans, you've got an issue, you've got, um, you know, you got a terrible, a terrible death that happened. It kind of gives you an insight into what could happen in the mm -hmm. military. And then, you know, at the, at the end of the day, you've got, you know, a, a guy who didn't want the job, um, a guy who kind of wanted the easy way out, who's got the overhanging ghost of his father in there. You've got the woman who sees that believes in the clients that's pushing and you got the lawyer that doesn't understand the clients and then slowly he relates but at the end of the day um they have the breakthrough and trial but at the end of the day it ultimately didn't fix you know it didn't everybody didn't walk away whole which i kind of thought was realistic because even on a good day in trial a lot of times you know do you get inner peace for a client no you don't a lot of you know you walk mm -hmm. out of there sometimes and even a good result it's got it's going to have an emotional overhang to it and um and i'm just kind of glancing the service on it but i mean that was kind of kind of off the cuff i mean i just think there was a lot in that movie to unpack which was kind of cool I, I think the <clears throat> for me it's the trial scenes uh, I, I think the trial scenes are I don't. I hesitate to call any movie really realistic, but um, but I think that the tri the, the 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 back and forth, the cross examinations, uh, Kevin Bacon Those again. Those were kind of good. Yeah. Again, maybe we have a, we've yeah. overlooked Kevin. But Kevin Bacon was was not a lawyer. He was Willie O'Keefe. He was a witness. But in this, he's a lawyer. Yeah, he is a lawyer. So it's uh, yeah. yeah, seven degrees. Yeah, so seven degrees. Uh, mm -hmm. So Tom Cruise, and I mean, you've got this, the the witticisms there with the. You've never been to the mess hall before. You've never had a meal before. Yeah. 
thinking on your feet. I mean, yeah. you just see just kind of in the moment, cross exam type stuff. You see mistakes that you can make when you overthink things too. I mean, a lot of that's realistic when you get in that. <clears throat> if you're getting in a zone and kind of not looking at the big picture or not being in <clears throat> intuitive in trial as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, just the prep time <clears throat> too, because that's there, a good a point. There's a ton of prep time that. <coughs> that's a good point. They're they're you know, hold up about it twenty four seven apartment. Yep. Yeah, they're practicing cross exams on the experts, you know, and, and that stuff. And yeah, I mean, I thought that part of it was and they're wound up. Now, what's mm -hmm. unrealistic is that's obviously the only case they're working on. Um, you know, I mean, I, yeah, <laughs> I, I think we could. OK, so I think we could really one of the things I so nitpicking those kinds of movies. So Tom Cruise, uh, there's a scene in the beginning uh, where he's talking about like he's had 45 guilty pleas in a row or something like that. And then they hand him this. One more, he gets a free set of steak knives. That's right. Yeah. Yep. See, there you go. We can't, you know, you're, you're right on top of it. So, but if you think about it, that type of lawyer is not getting handed a a really complicated murder with co-defendants. I mean, you, you're not, th these are not driving on base drunk. This no, they is wanted, not. They wanted it to go away. This is not a fist fight. <laughs> maybe, maybe so. I mean, um, now, one of the things I think that we get into with a few good men, one of the byproducts, okay, is that I think uh, as lawyers, there are many of us who are stars of our own movie. That oh, yes. In, in, in one thing is this, too. Everybody is the good guy in their own case <laughs> every single time. And it doesn't matter if you're representing an insurance company even though we all know that they're the spawn of the devil, it doesn't, I mean, that the insurance lawyer believes that they're cutting down on insurance for, it doesn't matter who you are. I think there's a lot of lawyers who look and they think I'm Tom Cruise. Oh yeah. I'm taking, <coughs> taking the manual away from Kevin Bacon and flipping the script, getting, getting the code red. Yeah. Getting the, the most important witness in the case to flip, you know, mm -hmm. and not realize you set a trap for him and you, and you got him into it over, you know, you, you knew the emotion. You read them when you first met them, and the emotion worked to your advantage in the courtroom, and it went exactly the way you thought it was going to go. Right. You know. One thing I think everybody needs to understand, too, uh, for, for those folks who are watching who are not lawyers, getting witnesses to say things against their interests is extraordinarily hard, really in any, in any circumstance, in any setting. It just doesn't happen, and I have probably had, especially when the judge is screaming at you to shut it down at the same time, you know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, well, you're you're fighting multiple things, but but witnesses are witnesses can be difficult for for a number of reasons, but they also are not unless you have to completely lock them in, in order to get them, and many times not to admit to something dishonest, or illegal, just to get them to admit a mistake. It, it, it's very, very hard. I think one time, one time I've been able to get a police officer to admit that they lied, to admit that they lied. They, they just don't do it. I mean, and not that they lie a lot. I mean, sometimes there, there's exaggerations and, and witnesses are going to see it the, the, the way that they want to see sure. it. The word lie is a very powerful word in a courtroom. I, I do my best really to try not to get there, but what we have to settle for a lot of times in a trial is, okay, witness, you said the sky was blue to the police. And then now today the truth is the sky was cloudy. Yeah. Why are you, well, I'm not lying. I'm not, and, 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 and oh, it is cloudy. And they, they, they can sit there and dance around it, but they, they'll never admit that they lied. No, it's mostly that they, they oversold it a little bit in the report or, you know, the video that may not show exactly what happened, but it's still, it's not an earth shattering, the, the courtroom all stops kind of moment. Right. And, and <clears throat> what you hope for is that the jury sees what the witness has done right. and the jury comes to that conclusion that they have lied. Now, a few good men, you're damn right. What would he say? What's the line? You're damn right. I ordered or the, the code, code red. red. Yeah, I'm going back to my base. I'm going back <laughs> to my base. And uh, now I also didn't know. I guess apparently Tom Cruise can arrest people. I guess lawyers could arrest people because he says at the end he says you're under arrest. Well, yeah, he. I think he just said that. But you know, I think the bailiff was taking him, wasn't it? Because then uh, the Kevin Bacon was going over to read. Um, read him his rights. Yeah, the other one. The prosecutor. Yeah, no. Who's the other Marine that was in there? That uh, oh. 
Oh, he's been in a lot of things too. He was the one, the the commander underneath um, Jack Nicholson's character. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah you Colonel know Markinson. No Markinson. Not, no, he Mar- shot himself. In yeah, the yeah movie. Markinson shot himself. I'm talking about the other one that was. He was in like Young Guns. Oh, oh, Kiefer Sutherland. Yeah, Kiefer yeah. Sutherland. That's it. Sorry, yeah. I'm, I'm oh, getting he older. Was, I yeah, can't remember anything He anymore. was the one who, yeah. everybody follows your orders. Yep. If, if, if Santiago wasn't going to be touched. And so, so getting back to Airman O'Malley, that was a good tactic. Yeah, it was. So t- t- take, take our jury through that tactic before you, but after I say you're watching J.P. Cathy and the Crew Network, this is the lawyer show. You can watch us between 12 and 1 on Thursdays. You can watch J.P. Cathy and the Crew between uh, 7.30 and 9, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm your lawyer, Jeremy Rosenthal. My co-counsel today is Bo Calabas. Bo is going to explain to us the um, the trial tactics employed by the defense in the U.S. government v. Dawson and Downey. So, Go ahead. Okay, so the end, what, so we doctored the flight log, or we had Markinson doctor the flight logs. Uh, Jack Nicholson. Yeah, Jack Nicholson. Jessup. Jessup had uh, Markinson doctor the flight logs to basically uh, show that there was a flight off at 6 a.m. And um, what uh, they couldn't find any record of any flight, but they, they brought in the, the guys that were just going to testify that, that they didn't see anything land mm-hmm. at 6 a.m. in Washington or whatever it was. So it was just kind of a little, you know, I, I think – you know, he knew he was losing ground with Jessup all the way through it, and that was just kind of a – he couldn't find anything, and he couldn't really be – it was it, it was cross-examination with nothing, you mm-hmm. know, to, to, as, as a back support where, well, let me refer you to this record. He didn't have anything like that. So I think, he, you know, what he was trying to do was get him to say, oh, I found something. So they and, bought – so so they knew that they had doctored the books on the flight. Yeah, he could, well, because Jessup had uh, told him to, according to Markinson. Before he so they himself. they brought in a couple of airmen who had yeah. nothing to do with it. They just right. brought them in. Yeah, they were going to testify that uh, Weinberg, uh, Tom Cruise's assistant there, Kathy's assistant uh-huh. there, had had scoured, you know, Andrews Air Force Base and couldn't find anything. But he's he's like, what are these guys going to say? Well, they're going to say that uh, they had they, they didn't see an airplane come in. They didn't, you know. There well, was they no, weren't even, but they weren't even witnesses that day. I thought they, they just rounded up two rando. Yeah, they they rounded Air them Force up. People. Yeah, they brought them in as witnesses to say they didn't see anything. <laughs> but they just they but say. they put them in the courtroom and yeah. that. That's what it was, and then the guy goes, "Oh, you know, uh, uh, Colonel Jessup uh, 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 sees them and gets uncomfortable, and yeah. so that's a, a really good way to box him in. So, very good trial advocacy. Um, so, am I Markinson? Have you checked to see? Are you Markinson? What, oh, well, is that that was a line in it, right? Yeah, because he was counterintelligence. It's like I could be Markinson, and you don't know. Are you Markinson? No, <laughs> I'm not. Markinson. Heidi, are you Markinson? Okay. Frank Stark's going to be happy about it. We that. have to go. We have to talk about my cousin Vinny. Uh, Marissa Tomei. Marissa we have Tomei. to. Who was also <laughs> in. I, it, she, he, she was also uh, a big part of the Lincoln Lawyer. She right? was an outstanding part of the Lincoln Lawyer, I might add. And, and she was darn near. She was not. Did she may have won an Academy Award for my cousin Vinny? I don't know. Can you look. check? Yeah. All I think she may have. All I remember was her biological clock was ticking. Well, she says. Uh, there, there was the one. Okay, so she's uh, and my cousin Vinny gets a lot of adulation. I think, rightly so, as a as a good lawyer movie, it's technically very good. As a lawyer movie, it it is. Uh, it, there's so much in it, and I was I, w- I was watching because I knew we were going to talk about it, and I've seen it. I'm sure five ten times. I was watching again some of the things from it last night. And there's so many subtleties. Did she win an Best Oscar? Best supporting actress. Best supporting actress. She was great in that, though. Yeah, phenomenal. Mm. She she was the star witness um, as an expert. Which, it, well, talking about that, I mean, it was a very very good explanation of how expert witnesses work in a courtroom, mm-hmm. because she had the knowledge and the training and the experience to basically come and to, to make those conclusions, which I thought was was accurate that's how they were doing him but i just got a note from my wife that it, she did win best supporting act uh, yes. so she must be we have a viewer exactly. and, so and uh, yeah. what is impressed. what's Corey's opinion on a clockwork orange Does I, she gonna, i'm probably gonna she gonna that weigh tonight. in on that <laughs> so uh but yeah the uh and 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 going back to um to my cousin Vinny, sort of so he goes into the southern court room Oh God, I forget the judge's name. But, yeah, uh, he was in a Herman lot of stuff. Munster. Yeah, he was in a lot of stuff too. And it, it very formal, very and, and, and very. You will dress this way in my courtroom. You will be prepared. You will do this. You will do that. You and we've all this. run into that. That's real. It's and yes, you know. and it's very consistent with small towns. Absolutely. And 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 
and, and the judge even says to him at one point, uh, uh, maybe in New York City, blah, 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 blah. But that's the attitude because so many of these small towns and counties have this sort of, uh, I, I don't know if it's a Napoleon complex, but there's a lot of, well, we have to be very formal, and we and, and they just take themselves so well, seriously. And it's you hard. don't want and look, and also too, it's like they're not going to be told what to do in their southern community by a Yankee, you know. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the other underlying tone with it too. It's like this is how we do it down here. You may be sloppy up there, but this is we do yeah, it right. You may be casual. You, know? you may dress like that. You may dr address the court informally, but I, I mean, I, I thought that part too. And and maybe that's I, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's kind of part of some of the obvious humor of it, right? Um. But you also have, um, but yeah, the, and to me, again, uh, I also really like going back to the expert witness part of it. Um, an expert doesn't have to be a toxicologist. An expert doesn't have to be a blood spatter expert. I mean, she got up there, and just because she had worked in a garage, right. she could have testified in the state of Texas sure. with those qualifications. Sure. Yeah, it's like, I, you know, and something like if you've got, you know, case that may involve something like Snapchat, where I'm like, I don't have any idea how any of this works. But if you have someone that's a peer that knows how it works, knows how things move around on it, um, no, you know, or or any of the online apps for that matter that you may not be savvy in, you may need some of that to explain like, well, this is like in a harassment mm -hmm. case or something like that, where um, you know you wouldn't think that they would qualify, but once you learn how they understand, all you have to do is have the knowledge, experience, and you know, and it's, I mean, you're in, the, you've got a, you got a ball game with them. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah, excellent stuff. Um, the judge was Fred Gwynn, who played. Fred Gwynn. And that was his last movie before he died of pancreatic cancer. Oh, wow. Yeah. And his famous line is, what is a ute? <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. We, we ask ourselves these, yeah. these questions every day. Yeah, my cousin Vinny, uh, I, I, think that's, I think that that is very, I, I, I think it, it gets a lot of, like I was saying, I think it gets a lot of credibility for being a really, really good lawyer movie. And I, again, I, I think, and and, and all the shtick just kind of makes it better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it does. You it know. Does. And at the end, he had the breakthrough, which everybody, mm -hmm. everybody I talk to, that's what they just think criminal lawyers do is we're in the middle of a trial, and then boom, we see the light. And that doesn't happen on your cases. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, you know. Okay. I just thought that was everybody. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but it also shows he was a human being because he was trying to sleep, and it was like the trains one night, and car the stuck in the mud, and yeah, yeah, sleeping in the car in the middle of the forest. You know, like he was just trying to like mm -hmm. be prepared, and he finally ended up sleeping the best in the jail. Yeah. So, <laughs> so uh, a, a, a lot of it's interesting too because a lot of these movies are good courtroom movies, and a lot of these movies are good lawyer movies as far as. Um, as far as maybe the practice or just kind of the lifestyle. Like we were talking, um, let's see, a little about one of your favorites, uh, two movies that are kind of similar, Michael Clayton and The Lincoln Lawyer. I like those, but one one thing, if I may. Can you I hit, may. Can you I may. hit? Because they kind of run together, The okay. Verdict and Civil Action. I've got The Verdict here. Okay. Talk, so okay. I like the verdict. The verdict. Go ahead. You know, because you kind of come in in the middle of the case, and he's got a medical malpractice case, and it's Paul Newman, and this comes out about 1980. And it, the movie's rough around the edges. It just is. It's not, you know, it's old school. You, he's, he's, he got accused of jury tampering back in the day. He's, you know, had a brush with the state bar over it. Um, all the, everybody knows it, you know, but he's got this case, and he's an alcoholic, and he's struggling to kind of get back in the game. And he gets offered a good settlement on it, and his buddies like, "Look, we need to take it." And he decides to roll the dice, and mm -hmm. and you know he thinks he's got an expert witness that's gonna. I, th I think what the issue was is they uh, put a, a female under anesthetic, but uh, mm -hmm. they missed that she had eaten and she asphyxiated and died. And I can't remember if she died or was a vegetable for a while. She was in died. a coma. Okay. I, wa I This is another one that I watched a bunch of highlights. Yeah. Because I've seen it. I've seen it a. a a handful of times, but yeah, go and, ahead. And it's real good. And you've got the you've got the overhanging judge that's defense oriented up there. You've got the big you know uh, defense firm that's got all the money behind him and the prep. And you know they're talking about prepping the case. And one of the associates is getting married, and he's like, "Send your wife 
flowers because you're just going to be working through your wedding and all. You know, it just shuts everything down in a way they that go. just gives me warm fuzzies as a lawyer. <laughs> well, and and Paul Newman, it's falling apart. His expert disappears. Um, he brings in an expert that just gets his his rear handed to him. Um, but then he's got a gumshoe and, and he keeps going up to, mm-hmm. you know, down in New York to find a, a nurse that had, that had left and he gets the breakthrough where, you know, all, you know, all of a sudden where he wants to take the settlement right before the trial starts when he finds out his expert fizzled. Um, and then, uh, and you know, we've all had cases that are, that are built upon experts and then you get a little nervous when they say they're not going to come to testify or they've got other conflicts and you may not have them at Mm -hmm. trial. Um, a lot of folks are busy sometimes. So it's like, yeah, that kind of element where I'm like, Hmm, okay. You know, it's kind of, it's realistic to a degree and, you know, but ultimately that it ends up working out for him, but you see all the hurdles he's got to go through, but it comes down to, they finally found someone that was going to come in and, and tell the truth on it. Um, <clears throat> it, ext- okay, so one of my takeaways, extremely layered. The, the verdict right. is extremely layered in, in many different ways. And, and yes, it does focus a lot on Paul Newman's life, on his problems, on his alcohol uh, yep. uh, issues. I mean, he is, he's in there, right? He's at the bar drinking. Is he playing a there's one pinball, s- right is he playing the pinball machine right before he's going to go pick the jury and, and he's yeah. like oh damn I got to go and then he's running late and uh, so so I mean he's a very very flawed person up against really an impossible opponent because they even put a plant they had that female right the the firm planted the the love interest in there to right. kind of distract him or to at least figure out what he was up which to. I I haven't checked the rules of ethics I'm going to guess that's a little over the line remember remember the line in that it's like whiskey or uh, the winning winning is what matters winning is what pays winning is what buys the whiskey <laughs> <You know? laughs> i don't remember. So, okay now i will How say this. Do you remember this, thing? <laughs> this is this is what this is what he does well the the crossover <laughs> the, the crossover with the the civil action which had john travolta in it though mm-hmm. with um uh he plays jan schlittman in it and that's it, a true story by the, the way it was a true story but the verdict was based on one of his the the real jan schlittman one of his uh one of the first firms he worked for the verdict was based on his partner at that firm the the older the older um uh, mm-hmm. mentor and so like when he got into that case he didn't want it you know and it just shows that hey you know we think the wells uh, that was a well water case where you know the they had poison uh, poison mm-hmm. water and you, and that kind of gives you the reverse of what you're talking about with experts where i think it was william h macy's in there he's like you know well they suspect this causes leukemia that's just a euphemism for unproven and so mm-hmm you don't understand the money drain on a case like that. And that kind of goes back to your LA yeah. law where it's kind of BS on what they're doing where, you know, they brought in all the experts to show how the water flowed under the ground and how it got to the wells and all that. And at the end, I mean, it's whatever money they got out of, out of that case. Just, I mean, it wrecked the firm. It wrecked all those guys, yeah. you know, to some degree. It, uh, it totally <clears throat> destroyed them. It, it, yeah. It, uh, a civil action and, and um, the verdict are very, they're very similar in that part of it because it shows the very, it shows the human side of what those lawyers were going to. Um, and back to the verdict. Um, so <clears throat> I think what happened, right. So the, so the, so the patient, uh, I guess had, was under anesthesia. I think she vomited. Yeah. And, and she, because yeah, she, she had eaten fixated. and she told them that she had eaten yep. and they, they, they had doctored this, it, they doctored it. And then they, 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 they ran the nurse off and he, uh, Paul Newman ran her down. Right. Right. Um, but I will say this, I watched the closing argument from the verdict and either I am stupid or I can, I can watch that a hundred times and not know what, what, what he was talking about at all. He's talking about justice and he's talking about statues and he's talking about, uh, icons. It and sounded like a defense lawyer when you have nothing. He and just no didn't evidence, have anything to say. And, and another that point too you. that I should, uh, <laughs> before we move off the verdict, very upset clients. Um, well, and the same with um, the civil action, too. Mm-hmm. You know, yes. Because at yes. the end of it, they were like, you told us it wasn't about the money. It was about the apology that they never got or that, that well, they're going to clean all this up. Right. And, you know, and that's kind of where it goes into mm-hmm. when you're, you know, when you're a lawyer and you think you're an actor in your own movie, it's not about you. Right. It's all, we're here to kind of get the result for the client. You've got to be kind of what those movies teach me, too, is as I get into this, it's like I may have a battle with an opponent that may become personal or you may think it becomes personal, but it's ne- it's never, re- you can't get caught up in that. You got to divorce that and go, okay, I got to get back to what is the big picture here? What is, 
you know, you know, you, if you want to run of the media on a case or something, it's like, well, wait a minute, is that really a good idea for the client, or is that is that just does me? that help you, or does yeah, that help the client? Exactly. Right. <clears throat> it, it's always yeah. Again, always about the client. Um, and and I remember from the verdict, just the the clients are finally kind of catching on to Paul Newman because the lawyers have a lot of power and they have a lot of ability to just to put it bluntly to snow a client right and, and the client because they didn't know about the, the settlement offer i think initially that they would have taken is that it, right I think. I think that's what it, that's what started it downhill was they 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 were like wait a minute whatever it was like i think seventy five thousand dollars or something and they were just like you, it was two hundred and ten thousand. Oh, was it really and okay. then paul newman i think says to the deacon or whoever's offering it to him because the hospital is affiliated with the church, I guess, uh, and and Paul Newman is is talking one on one with the deacon of the church or the uh, whoever the official, and he says, "Huh, two hundred and ten thousand. He says that gets divided by three very evenly, right? Because the third being yeah. what his what his contingency fee was going to be. So uh, so he got off. So they got offered uh, a lot of money there. Um, I don't think anywhere near uh, what they actually got." What other, Heidi? What other quotes do you think we 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 get from from lawyer movies? There's one that I want to talk about well, we are with the insider. Time, so you definitely want to bring it up. But you you're you you're the one that listen. You, you hear. Now, I'm sure there's quotes that we have from The Office that we talk about. All the, the Office, time. the show. The Office from Boogie and Nights. There's a lot of movies that have made it into our A Serious Man. Serious Man, Boogie Nights for sure. Uh, what was the one? Uh, Burn After Reading. Burn After Reading, yeah. Yeah. But what have we learned here? What have we learned? <laughs> that you have to watch movies and shows to work at Reventhal Calibus and Tyrion. Well, we we, we no highly encourage it. Talking about if you don't. It's very, hard, it's very hard with some of the younger folks that we have, some of the millennial types. Because we can talk about these things and it just goes right over their head. Um, so hit it. Let's let's. What else you got on there? So I've got. Okay. So we have not talked. We haven't talked about the firm. That's another movie. Uh, Tom Cruise again. That's another movie about I'm the star of my own life. Movie. These are nice people, Abby. Nice people. I haven't I haven't seen this one in a long, long time. But so he works at this firm and he finds out they're all crooks. Yeah, they wine him and dine him. They know he's poor. That's what they go after. And it's a tax firm, but it's really they they help uh, clients that basically they they help the clients that wander the the um, the money for the uh, for the, uh, the the crime family for the for the mafia, mm -hmm. and they do the you know the mafia legal work there. But it's they're it's, overbilling clients yeah. is what they're doing, right? Yeah. Well, that's how they they do that as part of their policy. But what th that's how they get caught because he didn't want to turn over the information. The attorney uh, you learned about attorney client privilege mm -hmm. there. Yep. Um, that you know, right after he took an oath to you know uphold the privilege, that he was going to turn right around and break it for the feds. Who Ed Harris was in that, and uh, remember Ed Harris was the FBI yeah. guy. Okay, so what that here's the, here's what that makes makes me think of. So there was, uh, I'm a, and and this is an incident that I don't know how this even got resolved. It was it's been maybe ten years since this happened, but again lawyers we all kind of are sort of raised to think that we are these special special snowflakes that we are the stars of our own movies that that the whole planet sort of revolves around us. So there was a case in Collin County happened I don't know like I said 10 years ago maybe even longer than that and I forget the the, the particulars of it but that's not going to stop me from just kind of blasting it out oh we know <sighs> <laughs> so he goes so what happens is somebody is acquitted um and it was a the prosecutor didn't agree with the acquittal. It was a it was a DWI of some sort. Client has a bench trial, gets acquitted. I think the I think the, the what I heard was the client was sort of connected that the allegation was that there was some inside baseball there okay. su surrounding the acquittal which I would be very surprising to me if anything like that was remotely true. But we have in Texas what's called an expunction, which means you can have your records destroyed if you win a case. And at Rosenthal Calibestarian, we do a lot of expunctions. You can call us at 972-369-0577. That's how you get your record cleaned. Okay? So just remember, 972-369-0577. We file a petition for expunction. Once the judge grants that expunction, it is unlawful for anybody to disseminate that information. You have... 
the ability under Chapter 55 of the Texas Code of Criminal Procedure, in most instances, to deny the occasion of the arrest. Right, because it's a misdemeanor. Somebody tries to use that against you. It's a and so exactly. Mm. If you if you are a prosecutor, it is a you are committing a crime mm. by keeping and retaining those records and by showing somebody else because a because two judges have now come in and said, clear this person's record. It should be scrubbed from every governmental entity. You, you've got, you've got the, 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 the original judge and the other judge. Well, this lawyer, this prosecutor, decides that this, this acquittal is just wrong. And so he takes the file from the office, runs down to a, like a law school professor of his, uh, at, this at is SMU. True. This is true. Do you remember this? Yes. And then he goes and he cries on her sofa. Oh, I'm Mitch McDeer from the firm, yeah. and this is all about me. It was an anti-Mitch McDeer because Mitch was – he was going to do it, but he ultimately didn't do it. Oh, is that right? Mitch, well, Mitch found a way. So, so He got I, him I for mean, overbilling, another dirty lawyer trick that we don't do at Rosenthal Calisterian. Indeed. Um, so uh, – and, and I remember this made – this made I think this made the paper – at some point, um, that it was that it was so bad, and, and I never, I haven't seen or heard from this lawyer again. I'm who knows where he's, where his movie has moved to. But that's kind of what I think a lot of lawyers sort of think of themselves, kind of like that sort of, you know, uh, I I've got to every. We're we're trained to question things around us, and that's great. And we we also I think as far as professions go, I have yet to see a profession that polices itself anywhere near as well as the legal profession. I just don't think they do. I don't think that I, 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 I we have the state bar of Texas. Mm -hmm. We have um, the, uh, we have all of our ethics and grievance procedures. Right. Right. Um, you have, we have uh, grievance committees that are around. Well, and we, and we've, we've seen judges that if they think they're seeing something going on, mm -hmm. they, I, you They'll know, you. they will report people, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and we've seen them threaten to do that to certain folks. And, and it, it's, there's a lot of checks and balances in the profession, yeah. which I don't think a lot of people realize that are out there. So, so this prosecutor, what I think he needs to, the, the one who kind of ran away and did his little thing, what he needs to understand, what I, if I was talking to him, what I would say, I would say, I would say, okay, asshole, you're not the only honest lawyer in this county. There's other honest lawyers here, and everybody who touched this file, you have to start out with the presumption that they did so honestly. You are commit. You have gone out on such a ledge here that you are committing an offense on your own, because you think you're the only honest one, and you need to get. You need to get over yourself. Well, and, you know, I don't know if that's likening to a, a whistleblowing, because, again, I don't know if there was anything to whistleblow about in this certain scenario, but it's, you know, that that's kind of the thing is when you do something like that, because you're basically saying, I'm honest, but I'm going to violate a lot of rules and laws to do this, with some of which may even be criminal, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's getting to the point where you, I mean, I'm, you're, you're basically a pariah in your own field after that, you know. And the fact is, too, this guy had a remedy. If he thought that there had been foul play with surrounding the acquittal, if he had thought that there was foul play, he can call the police, too. Or, he can well, call the Texas could, Rangers who would could, investigate it. She could have objected to the expansion, too, you know, probably through the DA's office or whatever. We're, we're getting our pronouns mixed up. Bro. We are. We are. Anyway, we may be... Okay, so there's a great quote, quote from the. It, it, nobody's commented on anything. They I don't want to know. They Gosh, this is sad. This is just so makes me so sad. That's okay. This is what I expect. It's got some traction though. Well, you know, we don't put any effort into this. Why should they? So, um, okay, now the insider. If that's not reason to keep us turned on. I don't know what is it. That's <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you know. Okay, so the, the, there's the movie The Insider. I've okay. never seen this. I don't think you've never seen. I think it's The Insider with Russell Crowe. Oh, I thought, man, you would love the insider. I don't so, think I have. Russell, when did it come out? It, this is 2007, maybe 2008. So this is the movie where Russell Crowe plays the guy at the um, at the at the tobacco company, and 60 Minutes is doing their interview with him, and then the tobacco company tries to come in and shut down the interviews. I have not seen this. And tried to shut down the news story. Okay. And so it, it, boy, that's a great movie because. Y You've got lawyering from several different angles. You really haven't seen mm -hmm. this? I don't think so. Oh, my Lord. 2007, so, that's, you know, when I just kind of... Are you finding it? It's 1999. Oh, 
My um, bad. And it was actually nominated for seven Academy Awards. That's all. Including Best Picture and Best Actor in a Leading Role for Russell Crowe. Okay, no, wait, I was worried about finishing law school. I was totally focused back in those you were, days. You were, you were in the zone. I get it. Um, okay, so this is a great movie. Okay, because you've got 60 Minutes, who they're, they're threatening, and the tobacco industry is threatening to sue the potatoes out of them uh, for running this story. Russell Crowe is this, I, I saw the signal for wrapping this up. This is a great episode. I think we stay here until they kick us out. <laughs> is, anyway. We're going to need food brought in if we're going to do a standoff. Uh, man, there's just too much to go through. So so the insider says... Part two, Bo will have to be another repeat guest. We'll have to do this <laughs> yet again. You just committed yourself there. So the next time we have a last-minute change of guests... Well, I think our three listeners will like it. <laughs> well, I mean, maybe next time somebody will comment on on some, anything. Anyway, so so the, so the so Russell Crowe plays the scientist who worked for one of the big tobacco companies, and he's gone rogue. He's gone off the... He's gone. Oh, okay. He, yeah, he, okay. he's gone. Uh, as they say, in that's the got a Michael Clayton kind of feel to off it. the reservation okay. is what they call it, and and so he's gone and um, basically saying these people are just killing people just to make money is is what he says. Sixty Minutes interviews him and he and he breaks it down and then it, it gets into this whole legal battle and so there's one scene that's great where Mike Wallace is talking to one of the CBS lawyers. The CBS lawyer is a very young lady. She's maybe thirty. And she's and she's and she's laying it out to him. She says, "This or that, this or that, Mike. You've got to blah 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 blah." And he goes, "Mike, I'm Mike now, Mike." Because <laughs> Mike Wallace at this point is in his sixties and he's right. a highly accomplished journalist. Yeah. And she was like, "Oh, I guess I'm Mike." Yeah, and he's like, "You can." And he tells her where to go. Uh, but there's a great scene too because there's a I think there's some type of state administrative hearing or an injunction, and they go absolutely bonkers in there and this guy and these lawyers who are as alpha and as mean as they get at one another are standing up and one of them says the the state this state kentucky has put an injunction on you sir that means you don't talk in this deposition i'm instructing you to remain silent the other lawyer just explodes at him and he says uh and it's the guy uh, the actor i'm gonna forget his name also in animal house he says oh you have rights <laughs> and you have lefts and ups and downs and sideways. And he says, and then the guy smiles. And he says, and you wipe that smile off your face. We are in the sovereign state of, I think it's Mississippi. Anyway, I'm not doing it justice. That's not going to stop me from making an idiot out of myself here. I am shocked that you haven't seen that. It sounds a lot like the, I, I mean, a lot of the civil depositions I was in, a lot of them were smooth. There were some of them were just turned into, yeah. let's see who can be the bigger bully. So that, I, I might have to crank this in. That was, that, that so. is a great, that is a great civil lawyer being a civil lawyer scene stark what is your favorite lawyer movie she's just trying to get us off yeah, the no shows. corey basically just said that was being added to your weekend plan the, the insider watch. no to watch um clockwork orange oh well see there so we go we have question. persuaded that we have persuaded yeah. the authority she is my social she's director, gonna hate it i don't know so. she may not hate it i don't know her tastes nearly as well as i do yours just understand just Corey needs to understand they banned this movie for 10 years in England for a reason. Yeah. A good reason because this is. It's a one time watch. For it's. Me. It, yeah. have you, you've seen it, Heidi? I have. Yeah. Yeah. See, this is why I haven't watched it yet. It's kind of like, eh, you know. Eh, it's Stanley Kubrick. I know. Tell I, me what he's done that sucks. Yeah, not much. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. Not Dr. Strangelove. None of it. Not Spartacus. He did Spartacus, right? Oh, I don't think I've seen Spartacus. Oh, wow. I know. I, Jeez, I, you know. you've got to watch that. That's amazing. Uh, Heidi, you wanted to talk about the Pelican Brief before they throw us out of this room. I do like the Pelican Brief. I like it, too. I thought that was a great one. That's a good movie. Yeah. Yep. Denzel. Blowing up cars. Yeah. You know. Like oh, Sam Shepard. That's right. Save, the, save nature. Save the birds that yeah. were in the bird. I kind of like the tragic lawyer like Sam Shepard was in that. He's teaching, but he's just kind of hanging on in the bottle. You know, it's just yeah. kind of, that's good Having stuff. Having a thing with yeah. one of the law students. You know. Yeah, kind of skirting the that's rules. Fine. But, you Nothing know. wrong with that. I mean, not a lot of comedy in, for the purposes of the Lawyer Show podcast for In To Kill a Mockingbird. No, mm-hmm. not, not so much. Uh, Caddyshack, we have Judge Smales. We do have Judge Smales and Caddyshack. I have, what I was know. the line where he put people away for... I've, <laughs> okay, so I have, I, have a, I have a few friends who can quote Caddyshack <laughs> Heidi, verbatim we're the whole Heidi thing. right now. The whole thing. And, one, and, and I'm going to kill it, and I'm going to get it wrong, 
so I'm, I'm sorry about that in advance. But it is, I've sentenced to people to death younger than you. Didn't <laughs> want to do it. Felt I owed it to them. <laughs> I said, so uh, So he's talking to like an 18-year-old. <laughs> so, uh, Danny Noonan. <laughs> Danny, Danny Noonan, right. So there's Judge Smales and... Um, so that, that that's a that's a pretty iconic character. Man, I think we've covered as much as we can. Um, there's we could we could go for another two or three hours, but I don't think I don't know that that would be. I don't think anybody behind us here wants us to. I, I don't think that's I don't think anybody needs that. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Successful show, though I gotta say. Well, I, I feel that way. Um, Lots of good <laughs> quotes, which I knew there would be. I don't know how you all can remember all those. Did a good job representing today. I don't know how we know them either. Bo's better. You know, I don't know, though. I mean, it's kind of, I don't know. I watched uh, the, the the movies we have seen. I've seen them a bunch, you know, so it is kind of, I don't know. There's some good and bad. But hey. I mean, we, we haven't even gotten, I mean, there's just so many movies, like 13 Days. 13 Days. Apollo 13. Apollo 13. Yeah, we, we got to get off. Okay. This has <laughs> been a great episode of the Lawyer Show podcast. Thank you, and we'll see you next week.